So, Ricky Hatton and Amir Khan have both announced their next opponent. Um, Amir Khan has also announced his new trainer, um, who is now Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter is the trainer of one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, Andre Ward. Now, I want to have touch on this point at the moment about Andre Ward, Virgil Hunter, and Amir Khan. Virgil Hunter trains, or has trained um, Andre Ward since he was a young boy. Uh, so they've got a relationship that's gone way, way back. And um, Virgil Hunter understands Andre Ward inside out. Andre Ward is definitely a student of the game um, and uses the ability he has to the best of that ability. Um, he's very adaptable. And the great thing, the best attribute about Andre Ward, his ability to adapt to fighters. So he can change his game plan to suit the opponent he's about to fight. He can box on the inside, he can box on the outside, he can stand toe to toe with you. Okay? Andre Ward is a very, he's one of the rare fighters today who can do all things and do them pretty good. Um, so, so really, um, Virgil Hunter has got a fighter there that also listens um, and is pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world and he's become pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world because he's had to listen to various and listen and study the game and uh, adjust to the various fighters um, from Arthur Abraham to Mikhail Kessler to Alan Green, to Carl Frotch, to um, Dawson, you know, um, Saki Obika. I mean, the list goes on. But at the end of the day, Andre Wall's been able to make those adjustments um, because of his trainer and the relationship he's got with his trainer. Enter Amir Khan, who was first when he turned pros with Oliver Harrison. Um, um, and he left Oliver Harrison and joined with his uh, Puerto Rican trainer. I think Puerto Rican. Um, and that, that trainer suggested that Khan fought Prescott. Uh, Prescott um, had a big knockout record coming into the fight, and Khan, previous to that fight, had been dropped by the light hitting Willie Limond and Michael Gomez who's coming to the end of his career um, so there were question marks about Khan's chin back then um, and if anybody wants to go back and look at the Prescott fight um, and you think you take into consideration Khan's uh, vulnerability around the chin uh, he came out in the first round he literally jumped out of this corner for the first round and came right out and stood right in front of Prescott. Now, was that the game plan based on what the trainer had given him, or was that what Khan wanted to do on the night in front of his his crowd, his home crowd? Oh, let's go out there and knock him out quickly against Prescott. Who's this unknown guy? Who's, who's Prescott? Um, and if you notice, yeah, first of all, he walked straight onto the Prescott left jab, which hurts him, and the rest is history. Um, and gets knocked out. So what they do, they go to Freddie Roach. So Freddie Roach brings Khan back against guys who are smaller than him and lighter than him. Um, Barrera, Fagan, light punchers. Um, even the guy who won the world title off was a light puncher. So we don't really know whether Khan had learned from his mistakes, to be honest, until he fought um, Medina, Medina, or Medina, and the Medina fight, people called it fight of the year, yes it was fight of the year, um, Khan has got good boxing skills, but his boxing skills and his brain are in two different places, now, could you imagine someone like Andre Ward, who's got all the boxing ability, want to stand right in front of somebody who's a big puncher like Medina. He really wouldn't. 
he would use his boxing skills. Khan stands in front of somebody who's a known puncher and almost gets knocked out. If you look at the 10th round, almost got knocked out uh, against a guy who's slow of feet and hand, was still able to catch Khan and catch up to him. Khan won the fight in points and a lot of people say that was a great performance. For me, I found it very sloppy. Exciting it was, sloppy. Khan was, was able to be hit and hurt way too often for a guy who has got um, good hand speed and combination puncher and can move in and out and move you know remember you're talking about a guy who was a, a, a Olympic silver medalist okay so they don't give those things out so guy so I'm saying Khan has got the ability um, then he fights Peterson um, regardless if Peterson was on something or not um, Khan cannot fight on the inside it's a fact it's a known fact Khan cannot fight on the inside and he's still very amateurish. When somebody's going backed up against the ropes, he's trying to push them off. And uh, Khan, I don't think he's physically that strong uh, as a fighter. Um, he, he wears you down rather than knocks you out with big punches. Um, he's got good hand speed, like I've said. Um, so, the Peterson fight happens. And then he has the fight against... Danny Garcia, who I predicted Garcia would not Khan out, um, which he did. Um, and if you look at the Garcia fight, um, Khan came out of the trap saying he was going to come straight out of the trap looking to knock Garcia out. Garcia had never been knocked out and stood toe to toe with somebody who punched harder than Khan, which was Eric Morales. And Eric Morales has got a better chin than Khan, and Eric Morales is a better boxer than Khan. Better boxing ability, even though Morales is, you know, in Twilight is crazy. Well, most people would say he's past it. Um, so, having those elements there, and then Khan gets knocked out, blames Freddie Roach for not spending time with him. But Khan knew from the beginning of his career, uh, his career with um, Freddie Roach, that Freddie Roach was with. Pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, Manny Pacquiao. Again, Froch has worked with Manny Pacquiao for many years. They've got a very tight relationship, and Khan was expecting Roach to, to, to you know, cancel out on him, and you know, give up um, Chavez, give up Pacquiao. Why? Why would you do that for somebody who you know has got problems against big punches? Right? Of course you would. Um, so anyway, Khan leaves, he joins now with Virgil Hunter, so he's still second in the list, he's still not got a full-time trainer, which is what he was complaining about beforehand, so is he going to try and disrupt and under Ward's camp now? So what happens now? He goes with uh, Virgil Hunter, and now he's going to fight a guy who is... I think it's Carlos Molina is the next bout. Uh, Molina is smaller than Khan. It's not a knockout puncher. So here we go again with Ahmed Khan fighting guys who can't punch. Um, and you know he, this guy might be quicker. He might have good hand speed and he's unbeaten. So he may, he'll have the ambition to try and you know, and he'll obviously have seen Khan's been knocked up before. Plus, we don't know what Khan is going to be like. Uh, coming back after being knocked out or stopped by um, Garcia. Um, we don't know what he's going to be like mentally coming back into the fight. So, oh, Virgil Hunt has got a lot of work to do. You know, he's not a, he's not God and he's not a miracle worker. And Hunt is not going to need to put a, 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 um, a, a guard on that chin of Ahmed Khan. And Khan's... Uh, Khan's um, DNA or his makeup to want to brawl when he should box. Um, if that was going to change, it should have changed under Freddie Roach. It hasn't happened. You know, Khan's been boxing for a few years now. You know, after being knocked up by Prescott, he thought he would have learned his lesson. He didn't. He went toe to toe with another big puncher. So, what do we learn from Amir Khan? For me, I don't personally think that he, is, is Virgil Hunter going to have the time to train 
um, Amir Khan the way that's necessary. Look, you're gonna have to give Khan uh, a better defense. You know, you're gonna have to tell it. You know, you basically have to take this guy from scratch, and because you're dealing not just with the the physical makeup of fighter, but you talk about the mental makeup of fighter. And then what happens when he has to fight the big punches again? Uh, when it what happens when he fight hits gets hit on the chin by Garcia, or heaven forbid he fights Lucas Matisse. Um, a fight against Ricky Hatton's in in the making, or even Kell Brook. What happens if he needs steps up to 147 pound? You know, if he's getting bullied and and and, and hit and hurt and knocked out 100 uh, 140 pound, what's he going to do 147 pound? So we won't know how good, well, what the improvements have been made um, with Amir Khan until he gets hit on the chin again by somebody who can punch. Look, a rematch with Breeze Prescott would have been the best answer. You know, we're basically getting fed the same old nonsense again. Khan makes a comeback against somebody who can't punch. He looks fairly decent. We'll, we'll see how he looks against Carlos Molina um, when I've had a little more time to look at Molina. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, a one-way fight with Amir Khan. Okay. Ricky Hatton has announced his uh, next opponent. Um, a lot of people are glad that Ricky Hatton is back. Um, I'm for one, I'm definitely supportive of Ricky Hatton coming back. Um, his demons with uh, being knocked out by Manny Pacquiao. Um, that's no way to end your career. Um, and Sushchenko, the, the guy that um, was the world, the WBA champion, who fought Pal Pauli Malinaji. Uh, Paulie Malinaji was able to outbox him in, at the welterweight, in the welterweight limit division. Um, Paulie Malinaji was able to outbox um, Shevchenko quite easy. They put good jab and combination together. The Malinaji is not a puncher. Shevchenko kept walking in in pretty much straight lines. Um, I expect to see a revitalized Ricky Hatton, a healthy looking Ricky Hatton, somebody who's not struggled to make the weight, somebody who's filled out more into the weight division, somebody who's a little smarter in the way his approach is to ring. You would think after having three years out of the ring and having been haunted by the Pacquiao fight and all the things he did wrong, he's probably gonna learn from those mistakes and be a better fighter as he's older. Um, he might not be as fast, um, but I suspect that as soon as Hatton starts landing those body shots, I mean, if, uh, Malinaji can make Shevchenko back up, then can you imagine what those body shots of Hatton's going to do? I think this will be, this will, Hatton's going to come back and look pretty impressive in this fight. It's going to shock a lot of people. I don't think we'll see the same Ricky Hatton, but I think we may even see a better Ricky Hatton um, in terms of his being wise. You know, he may get caught with a few punches and get excited because he's back in Manchester. He's fighting in front of his home crowd. And I think people should be too overcritical of him. But I think Hatton's going to come back better, wiser. And I think he will show some new, some new moves and some new tricks against a guy who was just the other day a world champion. So, you know, um, I know Malinaji beat him pretty easily. Um, Malinaji has got a good box of skill. The one thing Malinaji lacks, he's got a great chin. The one thing Malinaji lacks is a big punch. But to be fair, Malinaji has fought them all. He's ducked nobody. So Malinaji is a very good fighter. So let's not take anything away from Malinaji. And he's been fighting regularly. Hatton hasn't fought for a few years. And that's the one thing about that fight that may be a problem, uh, the Sevchenko fight. But I don't think Sevchenko is... He'll, he'll be fairly ambitious. You know, he knows that if he beats Ricky Hatton, he, you know, you know he's got something to talk about. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that Hatton's going to um, put a show on. And within six rounds, I think the body punching and the heavy-handed um, punches of Hatton stops uh, Shevchenko. I think he stopped him with a body shot as well. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Uh, look for Ricky Hatton and Amir Khan to meet in the future. Um, their fights down the line against Khan, um, Hatton against um, Kel Brook. Uh, obviously, Brook fought Hatton's uh, brother. Uh, and you can imagine if things don't go right at world level for um, 
Kel Brook, because I think he will get found at a world level. There's always the possibility of a Hatton Kel Brook fight down the line if Hatton gets past. Um, what's this gentleman's name? Shevchenko. Shevchenko. So, okay, those are my predictions. Thanks for watching. I'm out.